Hey guys, today I'm going to be going through everything I take with me when I head up into the mountains during winter. Should add that this isn't specifically if there's snow and ice on the ground, uh, this is just what I take from like November till March. If it is snowy, then there's like three extra pieces of kit I'll take up. First off is your bag itself, um, 30 to 45 litres. I, at the moment, I'm using the Low Alpine Mountain Attack um, ND, which is the girly version, uh, 35 to 45 litre bag. It's really nice. I haven't had it that long, um, and I'll review it once I've had it a bit longer. But so far, so good. So inside there, I have all my kit inside one big dry bag. Reasonably heavy duty, but it needs to be big enough to fit the whole of the bag. Right at the bottom, I've got an emergency layer. Um, this just sits at the bottom of my bag. It's quite big on me, so it fits over any other layers, um, and I haven't needed to use that yet, thankfully. Another emergency piece of kit is a survival bag. Again, I've never actually had to use one of these, but I wouldn't like to be caught out without one. They also make a fantastic sledge if you're on an icy bit. So, kind of in the middle of the bag, I have my food and my drink. Take plenty of food. Most people don't take that much because they think that they won't eat it. But seriously, what's the weight of a couple of extra cereal bars? Bring some sarnies, but also some flapjack cereal bars, chocolate bars, that kind of thing you can shove in the top of your rucksack or in pockets to have handy. It's never guaranteed that you're going to get a proper lunch stop to sit down, so have things you can eat on the move. During the winter, I always take a flask of hot drink up. Um, I tend to favour hot chocolate because I'm eight, apparently. But as well as that, um, a bottle of cold drink, water or squash or something as well, keep you hydrated. I tend to just use a bottle in the winter, but a camelback works just as well. I take between half a litre to a litre of liquid up, depending on how long I'm planning on being out for. Water weighs a lot, so don't be taking three litres like you might do in the summer. So now I'm going to go through the extra bits of kit I take up if it is snowy and icy. Crampons. Um, these are Grivel G10s, 10 or 12 point crampons will do. Also worth seeing if they've got snow bales on the bottom, uh, this just stops the snow sticking and building up and making the points useless. Ice axe, this is a DMM Cirque, uh, this is actually a mountaineering axe as you can see from the kind of slight bend in the shaft and the T at the top means it's technical graded so that means you can use it for ice axe belays and that kind of thing. This is because I tend to do um, kind of steeper stuff but if you're just into your normal walking then a straight shafted walking axe is fine. If it's snowy I always take a pair of goggles as well just because there is nothing worse than just blizzard in your face. So yeah I always have a pair of goggles in if it looks like it's snowing or is going to snow or has snowed. So that's those three things. Um, I'll quickly have a word on boots though. If you're using crampons, you need a B2 or a B3 graded boot. That basically means that the sole is stiffened enough uh, to allow crampons. Thing is though, I use these all winter round. That's because if a boot is designed to keep your feet warm and dry while you stood at the bottom of a gully belaying someone, then they're going to keep your feet dry and warm when you're walking up a mountain in torrential rain. Stiffened sole boots do take some getting used to though. Uh, always try before you buy and do your research because they are bloody expensive. So if you are going to be using winter gear, you need to know how to use it, okay? Pointy things and cluelessness don't go well together. Know how to put on crampons properly and quickly and also have um, a proper kind of crampon pouch in your bag so they don't rip into everything. For your ice axe, make sure you know how to carry it properly on your pack. Make sure you know how to walk with it safely. And perhaps most importantly, know how to ice axe break. That means that if you slip down a snowy icy slope, that you know how to stop yourself with your ice axe. Another thing that I need to mention is uh, avalanche safety. Now here in England, you don't really get that many avalanches, mostly because there's not enough snow. But it can happen, and even a small one is enough to knock you off your feet and further down a slope, possibly towards uh, a cliff face or something. So you should have a knowledge of the basic do's and don'ts when walking on snow, um, to all things to do with kind of steepness of ground. You should also really know how to assess a snowpack and be able to identify ground that's particularly uh, susceptible to avalanches. Here in England, not as important. I think a lot of people go out without that kind of knowledge, but if you're going into Scotland, 
you need to know that stuff. I can recommend the Mountain Skills Training Handbook. This is just a comprehensive guide of all the skills you can need while out on a mountain, both in summer and in winter. Uh, the BMC also have a really good DVD on winter essential skills. But probably the best way is to find someone who knows their stuff and to ask them to either talk you through it or show you out on the hill. So, a few other bits of kit I take up with me. Uh, first off, hats, gloves and buffs. First off, my hat, you'll have seen in some videos, um, it's by a brand called Zany. They're designed as ski and snowboard hats. They're really good at keeping your head warm, even when it's raining, even when they're wet. Also, you'll never lose me on a mountain in this. So, gloves, I have two pairs. Both are sealed skins. The first that I wear normally are these um, kind of thinner ones. They're still fully waterproof though. They've also got a grippier palm, but they're a lot less bulky than these. This is a proper winter pair, um, they keep your hands really dry, really warm, uh, but obviously they're a bit more clumpy so you can't really be doing as much in them. If I have to walk up to the snow line then I'll wear these and then swap them around once I hit the snow. Or on non-snowy days the thick ones just stay in my bag as a backup. And then for buffs, um, if it is quite warm, uh, in my last video when I was up uh, in Newlands Valley on Dale Head it was actually really really warm so I didn't wear a buff at all. But this is a thinner one that I'll normally wear and then I have a thicker fleecy one in my bag that I put on uh, if it's getting cold uh, higher up. So any bits of stuff I'm not wearing kind of go on that level. Above those I have first aid kits. Doesn't need to be a whole hospital okay but um, you need to know how to use it and kind of what to do if you do come across someone who's injured or you injure yourself. So this is my during the day extra layer. Now on most of my walks I set out and immediately I'm climbing quite high up. I use Paramo waterproofs which are brilliant but because of their design Paramo will keep you very very warm. So I'll start off with just my base layer and my Paramo top and then once I've done the majority of the climbing and got all the sweating out the way I'll, uh, I'll pop this on. And that lives in the top of my rucksack while I'm climbing. Uh, Montan Prism, by the way, a uh, really nice synthetic insulated jacket. Review will be coming later in the year because it's still pretty new. I think I have a spending problem, guys. I didn't check my bank account, it has taken an absolute battering. Too much new shiny gear. At least you guys are getting loads more reviews, eh? Excuses, excuses. So, right in the top pocket of my rucksack, I have uh, a little dry bag of bits and pieces. In here I have a bit of money, I've um, got a couple of those heat pad things just in case, uh, a foil survival blanket just in case, and maybe most importantly a head torch. You obviously don't want to be coming off the mountain in the dark, but just in case you do, always have a torch on you. Uh, make sure it's fully charged or has working batteries in it. Also very importantly, a uh, map and compass. Compass I always have clipped onto and inside a jacket pocket. My map always gets clipped onto my rucksack strap and then just shoved inside the, the bag waist belt. Very important you kind of clip these onto something because if they get blown away then you're screwed. Okay, uh, almost done now guys. Phone with charge with credit. If your phone is quite old so doesn't have a very good battery or is an iPhone Make sure you have one of those portable charger thingies or just better still just have it turned off in your bag. But I can have this turned off for two days and it'll still have charge on it. Because of that and the fact that I'm often up there on my own, I have a pair of earphones so I can just stick some music on. Banging tunes! Another thing I just remembered, if it's snowy conditions I always have a cheap pair of gaiters on. I do mean cheap, um, these I don't think are waterproof anymore, I got them from Mountain Warehouse years ago. But they stop your nice over trousers getting ripped if your crampons manage to nick them somehow. Another miscellaneous item, a uh, sit mat. I always have this just shoved down the side of my pack because no one wants cold ass from sitting on a wet rock. Group shelters. I don't. Shush. I don't personally take one of these up with me uh, every time I go out on the hill. Normally because they're just quite bulky and. If the weather does turn, I tend to just kind of keep powering on. It's not good, you should really carry one, especially in winter, um, but I just don't for some reason a lot of the time. I'm such a bad influence on you lot. I think that's everything. Um, 
Okay, so last one, optional extra, is another member of the Cuban race. Not a necessity, uh, but it's quite nice to have company sometimes. And if it all does go belly up, then at least you've got someone to cuddle in the group shelter all night. Okay, so that's my winter walking setup. I'm thinking of doing one of these what's in my bag videos for each of my uh, different activity kind of packing setups. Hope this video helped. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.